Hello everyone and welcome to the PlayStation Access podcast for a Final Fantasy 16 special. We're lucky enough to be joined by the game's protagonist Clive, aka English voice actor Ben Starr, for this podcast. As we dive into the nostalgia of the Final Fantasy series, the magic of Final Fantasy 16, and everything from the boyfriend list to Ben's take on double compartment bins. Hello everybody and welcome to the PlayStation Access Podcast, the official podcast of PlayStation UK, where this week we have a very special guest. Oh, who's this? It's Ben Starr! Yeah, it's the ghost of Ben Starr. Oh. Um, I play Clive Rossfield in Final Fantasy XVI. Oh, yeah. you got to say it like Clive. Oh, sorry, my name is Ben Starr and I oh. play Clive Rossfield in Final Fantasy XVI. It's happening! I'm so starstruck. I know, I'm, so, I'm already just like, Ben starstruck, am I right? Oh, you oh, are right. She's being quick. Oh, but we're having a Final Fantasy 16 special today with none other than Ben Star. So I hope you're very excited for that and excited for all the Final Fantasy goodness we have got coming up. Now, I have introduced our guests, but not ourselves. So I have a lovely round of puns inspired by Final Fantasy 16 to introduce our names as oh, well. Here we so, go. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. I'm always so, excited to be fair at this part. Yeah, I'm really sorry, Clive. Clive, but the, the easy one was Clive Rosiefield. Yeah. Very good. Yes. Very yeah. good. Simple, yeah. simple yeah. and clean. And then I, for me, I've gone Torgash. <laughs> that's, that's all right. That's, yeah. that's better than your usual standards. Uh, yeah. You know, that there is actually, there are two um, continents in this game. One is called Storm and one is called Ash. So you could just be Ash. You could just be, you could ash. Just be a continent. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've got Rob. Now, yours are always really great and thoughtful and have this lovely ob sound. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's uh, Jill Warob. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jill Warob. What, so what you've done there, That's, sorry, can we just break this down, is you've just basically just put Rob on the end of a word that has no relation to Rob at all. Yeah. <laughs> she does this every time. Every time. Dude, I thought you were going to go like rib or something, just Sid. But oh yeah, you can have rib. rib. Is this just bad? <laughs> What's that? It's just it's that doesn't have. Oh, you're just swapping <laughs> one letter of the word Sid into the word Rob. Yeah, that's that's how your name works. You could have been oh, you could have been you could have been just Robfield. Yeah, but then you've taken you've taken Rosiefield, so you can't have two puns yeah. on. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't want to Rossfield. be my brother. Both of you start with R O. You're not giving yeah. me much to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm going to move on because this, <laughs> this is going down like a lead It's balloon. not our fault, Rob, that you have a terrible name. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think what I could actually be. What about Robu instead of Ramu? Yeah, Robu. that's really good. Yeah, Robu. <gasps> Robu, that's better than Jill Warrock. Yeah, it's a little yeah, bit better than Jill Warrock. It is a little bit better, yeah. Not too much, Don't but it's a little bit better. Don't go on my side. <laughs> oh, my God. But anyway, I've got Benedicta Harmon. Ben Addicta. That, that was good. Benedicta Starman. Sorry. No, <laughs> that's, oh, really, that's great. That is great. That's there really go. good. You, you saw live <laughs> Ash's brain coming up with that then. <gasps> oh, that's yes. really good. I've hit a new height. <laughs> <laughs> good. This is very good. Right. On that high, I'm going to continue with a preview of what we'll be talking about in this podcast. So we're going to have a main feature, which is going to be all about Final Fantasy 16. It's going to be a little preview as well as some memories of Final Fantasy featuring Ben Starr. I just Ooh. love saying your name because it's like one, two, one, two. Isn't Thank it? you so much. Ben Starr is here. <laughs> <laughs> We're then going to go on to comments of the week. He's going to go in a minute. Which are carry on like ben this. Star is <laughs> leaving. <laughs> We're then going to go on to comments of the week, which are community highlights from the hashtag pod squad. Pod squad. We do that as well. Okay. So if you, if you say hashtag pod squad. Okay. Guys. What? Pod squad. Uh, thank you. Oh, so, oh no, I missed it. Yeah. Oh, so I'm not paying attention. Oh, slow. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to go to Before We Go, which is some coverage outside of gaming. But first, it is a question I ask every week. What's new? So, 
here we are in the What's New section. Hope that wasn't too shocking for you all. We're here and we're going to talk about some recent releases that have come out this week before we move on to the Final Fantasy goodness. So, Rosie, you'll be pleased to hear, I'm sure you already know, Crash Team Rumble has landed this yeah, week. Yeah, sorry, I was thinking what angle we're coming at here. But yeah, Crash Team Rumble's here. Yes. So finally some more Bandicoot action. Mm. The Bandicoot. That was a little improv cortex there. Oh, okay. Um, but I thought no, it was yeah. just you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I do always go like the crystals. Like you just got to do it with the cortex Have you voice. got any industry contacts, Ben, where you could get, <laughs> get Rosie in to, to voice a Crash game? Because <laughs> it's her destiny, I feel like. Yeah, I feel I feel like, I mean, I don't have any contacts, but I'll lie to you and say, absolutely. I'll just sell you the, <laughs> I'm gonna sell you the false promise. I'll like, even ah. be like, you know, I could be an enemy, like the yeah. scientist in the original that goes, yeah. yeah. yeah! You are hugely overestimating my power in this industry. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be a star, kid. You're going to be a star. You're going to be star. My new agent, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. I will take the industry standard 50%. Um, That's no. fine. Just put me, <laughs> let me be a little gremlin in Crush Bandicoot. Yeah. <laughs> take 50%. <laughs> um, how is it? How's the game? Yeah, really fun. I mean, I've still only uh, had a chance to play the beta that they released um, because I'm, you know, I'm sort of waiting for my time to just get in there and get some She's full, flexing her muscles. Full, yeah. full Wumper collecting action. But um, from what I've played, I'm having a really good time with it. Dingo Dahl's a beast in it. I remember oh. playing it and everyone's like Dingo Dahl and Dingo Dahl's just, they're just, they know how to use him already yeah. and it drives me mad because I'm there trying to be a Crash Bandicoot and then they're just, and they, they can just be Dingo Dahl and just completely dominate the area where you got to drop off the Wobber Fruit and I'm just like, you know your character too well already. I'm still learning. Stop I'm this. <laughs> also a Dingo Dahl hater. I hate that guy so much no I love Dingo Dahl as a no. character in general I, it's, it's evolved to hating him personally oh. now as well. <laughs> The Dingadal, the Dingadal sections on Crash Four were. I'm, I'm not. I'm not mistaken. The Dingadal stuff was quite difficult. Oh, the, the whole game, game was difficult. difficult. I'm going to say that is probably the most difficult game I've ever played in my entire life. <laughs> is, That's. Oh yeah. I. I would maybe agree with that. Like it, even more so than a Dark Souls. Yeah, yeah it's it, brutally punishing. It is brutal. It's brutal. Like as a platformer, it's brutal. Like really addictive, but so brutal. Especially if you want to kind of like max out. I I thought, oh, I'm gonna complete this game, and then well into it, I realised I was not gonna ever complete this game. <laughs> like no, yeah. finished. I finished the story, but like to get all the extra stuff on it, you have to go that yeah that it's, crazy. It's, extra that's mile. your Mount Everest, isn't it, Rosie? Getting the platinum on Crash Four. Yeah, literally. I have so many people in um our lovely access community being like oh how are you getting on with the crash 4 platinum <laughs> and i'm just like it's getting there like every now and then i might just pick it up and then i re remind myself how brutal it is i'm like i kind of feel like i need to have a rocky montage you know where <laughs> yeah. i just have a session where we don't have a video game coming out or anything and i'm just like solidly get back into the swing of it going in like you know sweat bands in crash bandicoot style and just get what i need to get for the the platinum but it's the blooming ones that are it's the relics where you have to get all the boxes and without dying yeah that's the savage one because yeah. all of the boxes all of the boxes and then there's a saying that that you know on average you get a minimum 100 120 maybe so you have to and they're on like really tricky platforming challenges and some of them they've been very sneaky and hid them like you know against a step that you walk by so you don't actually see it um so it's it's a very very challenging wow. challenge you can do it there, Rosie. I believe in you. I believe in you. I am the Bandicoot. If you don't, you're a fake gamer. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, I said Rosie. It first. I said it first, Rosie. Oh, God, look what you've done to it. That's a thumbnail there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that is the thumbnail. <laughs> My agent's letting me go already. Yeah. It's just like, you're a failure. <laughs> However, like Crash Team Rumble, when it comes out, it's a it's a co-op, isn't it? You can play it. Can you play it with... 4v4. 4 v four? Can I play it with you? Of course you can, yes. We've got a team of four here. Get rid of Dave. There we go. Yeah, get rid of Dave. <laughs> Bye, Dave. <laughs> We're sorted. There we go. Uh, also out this week that is released this week, which I'm sure you are going to be absolutely gassed about, is C Smash VRS. Oh, I love C Smash VRS. Yes. I love just racket games in general. I don't know if you've seen this, Ben. No. This is like PlayStation VR 2 Tron Tennis. Mm. It's like... It's like tennis in like a Tron esque cyberscape, and we played. <laughs> Did you just reverse the words there? <laughs> yeah, we played a we played a demo of it. We streamed it, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. And Ash and I had some very intense. In fact, if you look over there, you can see a scar on that wall <laughs> from where Dave, I believe, absolutely <laughs> smashed the wall whilst yeah. whilst he was playing the game. Um, it's intense, and Rob won, which is why he likes it so. I much. did win. And I really want to play it again, but yeah. like full on. I you mean, want, you want you squash know, and bananas? That's you what are, you keep saying. You are the reigning 
Winner plays on Queen. Oh, I don't know if you know this. I am a queen. Uh, <laughs> no, I, that's been made very clear. Yeah. And so <laughs> if, if I am chosen to be your next challenger, oh, I would like it to be a big epic C smash VRS you can't showdown. Pick it. But it will be that. But you, you can't pick it, but it will be. It will it will be. It'll be I know good. it will be. It'll, we were very closely matched as yeah. well. So that'll be a, an is, epic tussle. Is this a tease potentially for some Christmas maze antics? <gasps> Oh, he does like well, what games have I enjoyed this year? Yeah. We'll, we'll come, we'll, we'll crop up in the Christmas maze yeah. in some form. Yeah, but I have lots of exciting ideas for Christmas maze this year. Oh my it's going to be, it's going to be epic. It's How are you going to put Final Fantasy 16 in the Christmas oh, maze? That's wait. the question. Yeah. You just wait. Yeah. Mm, okay. Well, I'll wait then. I'll wait. <laughs> so, yeah, those two are, are out this week. Crash Team Rumble out on the 20th of June uh, for PS4 and PS5. So you can grab it now. C Smash VRS for PSVR 2 on the yesterday, whatever day that was. That was it. It's out now. It's out. It's out. Yeah, it's out right now. Go and play it. Um, and obviously, Final Fantasy 16 on PS5 out on the 22nd of June. But we're not going to talk about that just yet because that's our main feature feature. So, in lieu of all the news that we could spo- speak speak about. <laughs> of all the news that we could speak about, I have devised a celebratory, yet very dastardly, PlayStation Access Mini Quiz! Oh, oh we're doing a quiz! quiz. Okay. A quiz. Woo! Oh, now, oh, we have Final Fantasy self-proclaimed experts here. We have someone actually in Final Fantasy, also a self-proclaimed expert. Please tell us a little bit about loving Final Fantasy. Just a little, a little bit so for I, the audience. So I do love Final Fantasy. Am I an expert? I don't know. I'm a, I'm a passionate amateur. Okay. He's, uh, He's but playing I, it safe. I'm playing it safe. No, I've, I've loved Final Fantasy since I was 11. I played. Um, well, I said now you're, you now you've just thrown yeah, it out no, the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I love, I love, I love them. I love the franchise. Mm. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, I've just set myself up for complete embarrassment. No, here. W- look, as long as you beat these two, then okay. that's all that matters. Great. That's what. So you, so let's hear some smack talk. Come on. I'm, if anything, I'm because like you know. The res- <laughs> oh, no. So when we had the Resident <laughs> Evil quiz, Rob beat me in that one. So now I'm like, if I beat Rob on this one, where Rob is the image of Final Fantasy on the channel, I know. really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. You are, yeah, you have to win. This. I am going to win. You have to win you this. So, so now, win. if anything, I'm, I'm relieved yeah. that the pressure's now on Rob. I have heard that this quiz is quite hard. Though, yeah, so. yeah. Well, you've got to uh, win, Rob. Out of the Final Fantasy fan in the office, <laughs> got half the answers right really yeah so that's the high score is eight out of 16 and yes there are 16 questions now i'm gonna ask these and it's a a first person to answer dealio so you use your name to buzz in so ben you'll go ben we can go ben star whatever you like (laughs) uh rosie or you could go clive in clive's voice yeah okay clive (laughs) no. <laughs> do you know, what I love is so many people who've either worked on this game or have now spoken to me about it afterwards do an impression of Clive <laughs> I, mean, I can't help myself playing the game and whenever yeah. Clive says anything I always have to do a little impression yeah. afterwards as well Clive um, <laughs> I you should do an impression of people doing impressions I do Clive. I have done like I would often hear I would often hear some of um, some of the team who'd have done impressions of me to go alongside other actors and I'd be like can you do that for me can you do that for me <laughs> And I'm like, is that what you think of me? (laughs) And everyone, apparently, everyone in this production for four years was doing an impression of me behind my back. (laughs) That's nice, though. That means you're doing an iconic voice. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's what I'll take it as. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Right. So we've got 16 questions. You shout your name to enter, and then you may have an answer. If you get it wrong, shout names again not including the person who right. got it wrong. So if you um, get it wrong, are you frozen out? You're frozen out, but oh, right. I need you to shout your names again to take over right. the answering. Okay. Okay. Um, and if all of you sit there like, Ugh, then I'm going to give you like five seconds before yeah. I say it's a Great. fail. Okay. you got to remember our own points as well because I, I'm, I can't count. So <laughs> one, you'll notice the theme straight away. Okay. Which sea that you traverse in Final Fantasy 1 shares its name with a UK supermarket brand. Or, Rosie. Oh? Sainsbury's. Wrong. <laughs> Sainsbury's <laughs> C. <laughs> And wow. I was like, as the Sainsbury's. I was like, I can imagine Sainsbury's C. <laughs> Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's. Yeah. I was like, I can imagine a C being called Sainsbury's. A supermarket brand. Yes. Okay. Uh, Rob. Yeah? Asda. No, I've done it. What C? 
Uh, this is oh, a, oh, a sea, like it's an, an ocean. ocean. An ocean. I thought like a. I couldn't think of a supermarket brand that began with the letter C. <laughs> well, now you, we're both frozen out, Ben. So yeah, you've got you. you've got free reign at this yeah. now. Um, Come on, supermarket brand. Have a little go. Yeah. Um, a Morrison's. Guy. Morrison's. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it Waitrose or something? No, it's Aldi. It's Aldi. Aldi. Aldi C. The oh. Aldi C. Yeah. I, I think Aldi named themselves after it as well. Yeah, they in, did. In yeah. my opinion. Huge so. Final Fantasy fans. That's zero <laughs> points for everyone so far. Sakaguchi has a load of shares in Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question two. What metal from another popular fantasy series? Rob, Ben. Damn it. Me thrill. Damn it. Yes. The question was, yes. what metal from another popular fantasy series does Princess Hilda request your party go and find in Final Fantasy 2? And it is me thrill. Me thrill. Me thrill. Question three. Who is the true antagonist of Final Fantasy 3? Rob. Yeah. Come on. Oh, God. It's not Golbez, is it? I was just going to say Golbez. It's nope. not. It's the. It's not him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. I'm any answers out. over here? I haven't played three yet. Yeah, but not even a guess. A guess. Um, I'm going to say, Ben, it's not X Death. No. Because that's five. Yeah. Uh, Rosie, I'm going to guess. Mm hmm. E for it. No, it is Cloud of Darkness. Oh, Cloud it's of one of those darkness. things that comes along at the end. Yeah. It's like, yeah. actually, I'm the... Oh, I'm it's, the like, it's, like, it's like Necron in Nine time. who just comes yes. out. Yeah, he's like, it was me all along. I'm like, was it you? <laughs> <laughs> was it you all along? I am like the universe of everything. Yeah. How do you not know me? It's like, nice to meet you. Classic Final Fantasy, Deus Ex Machina. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't think it was you. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't met, actually. Yeah. Uh, Great Nick game, three. Definitely yeah. uh, play it if oh, you're yeah, not very, here. Very, very memorable for you. Seems you know who the big baddie was, huh? Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I did remember. I just couldn't. Oh, cloud of darkness. The first time, yeah. the first time I ever played three was actually on my iPhone, and it was like all the little cute little chibi things running around. Little yeah. Chibis. If you haven't played it, obviously play the Pixel remasters. It's yeah. a very good game. Very I know. I'm game. saving it for the Pixel remasters. I started one. And now we've got 16 coming up, so <laughs> yeah. that's why I had to take a pause on one for Anyway, a bit. more questions. I'm winning. Question Morrison's. <laughs> <laughs> Question four. Final Fantasy IV, yeah. increase the party size to what number? Brothel. You said four, which isn't a good name. So <laughs> four. <laughs> yeah, four. Four, yeah. No. Rosie. What? Um, six. No. <laughs> ben. Yeah? Five. Yeah. Oh! Um, Oh my god! That's I knew right. it wasn't yeah. four because four's in the other one, so I was just like, "It's the first. It's the first game to have five in the party number." <sighs> That's great to know. Mm. I should have got that. How many points are we on? I've got one. One. I've one. Got one. Zero. Zero. Okay. Question five. Plenty to come. Plenty to come. Which of X Death's henchmen first Ugh. appearing in Final Fantasy V makes numerous cameo appearances throughout the Final Fantasy franchise? This is easier than you think it is. Uh, Rosie. Yeah. Sid. No. <laughs> not that easy <laughs> come on guys gonna have to make some noise in between just because the audio is it, is it the octopus the octopus uh, I, I don't know no, I don't know <laughs> it's not called the octopus on here oh, I'm gonna kick myself if I don't get this yeah 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 five is the one I know the least yeah you, well you don't need to know five to know this answer okay so the answer is I'm going to time you out in a second. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm, so, I'm afraid I don't know. Yeah. Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh. Oh! Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh. Good boy, Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh. Oh. See, see, everyone goes, oh, yeah. I know. I'm the true Final Fantasy fan. You, you are. are, yeah, yeah. Is it the octopus? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is the octopus Gilgamesh? That's what I was like. Gilgamesh. I don't know. It is. It's just it's Gilgamesh. Hey, it's it's the, the, this is the business end of this quiz now. Yeah. Oh, We're what? at Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. Oh. So, question six. What is the name of the technology humans develop by... Ben. Magitech. Yes! Oh, okay. Well done, well done by Ben. By experimenting on espers in Final Fantasy VI. Question seven. Oh. This is the one that everyone's going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it really slow. Okay. What is... That's too slow. Sephiroth. <laughs> oh my God, wait, wait, sorry. <laughs> Sephiroth. Rob. How ben. I've made I've made a risky Don't decision here. Genova. Wrong. Damn it! Uh, oh, is no. that not his name? I thought he was going for Sephiroth. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Sephiroth. It's like, hang on, wait a minute. <laughs> Sephiroth. Sephiroths. 
Sword. Ben. Mazanin. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Well done. It's either going to be what's his sword or his mum called. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a classic Final Fantasy, yeah. sword or mum. Sword or mum. We should play that quiz, sword or mum. Ah. We actually should. Yeah. That'll be a great quiz. Yeah, okay, you've got that. to come back and I'm going to make a sword or mum quiz. I'll play sword or mum. Ben's, yeah. Ben's pulling away now. Yeah, he is. You've He's got, got to three fight back. But you went mum. You went mum this time. So I, I, next had, to, time I had to jump in quickly because I know Ben's going to get this <laughs> if I don't take this risk. And I lost it all. You did. But there's still more questions to go. So we're halfway through. Great. Question eight. In Final Fantasy VIII, who has an affinity for hot dogs? Rob. <laughs> Zell. Yes. Correct. Yes. Oh, I was, like, yeah, that was what I actually knew, but I, I, like, I picked it at first and then your name came out quick. What's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. great, because your favourite seven, right? Yes. It's only right that you've got the eight one right because eight's my favourite as well. So I, feel oh. like I've, I just we pictured go. the hot dog cafe in the school immediately and I was just like, <gasps> the school! <laughs> I got the image and then I was like, I have to say his name! <laughs> okay, question nine. How is Final Fantasy IX's mist continent created? Where does the mist come from? Rob, the Aoife tree. Yeah. Correct. Oh, the, gra- the growl coming from Ben every time. <laughs> so I, keep forget- I keep forgetting my name. <laughs> I'll tell you. It's, it's ben. ben Star. It's ben Star. Ben Star. I just keep on gasping. I'm like, <gasps> and then by that time, Rob's already said it. Okay, question 10. How do you pronounce the main character of Final Fantasy? Th- 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 Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> you guys literally went at the same time to so do rock paper scissors for me, so that I can oh. tell. Because I literally don't know who came first. You can do, you can do it, Rob. It's absolutely fine. What? No competition. Do you cut rock paper? Wait, so rock, Ash is the referee. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're going to go one, two, three, and then reveal. Yeah. Okay. Three, so one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> one, two, three, go. Yeah. Okay, there you it's go, Rob. Rob. It is officially pronounced Tedus. Yeah, there we go. And I know that, that you had to swallow your pride a I bit did. to say yeah. that. It is officially pronounced Tedus, so there's a yeah. point for you. Okay, think carefully about this one before you jump in. Thank because you. Because this is where... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing at you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for laying down the rules. Thank you. Think carefully about this one because this is the one, one of our Final Fantasy fan testers in the office got tricked by okay. so what vegetables do chocobos eat in final fantasy 11 stables mm. Mm. well if you've said it's a trick so I'm, it's not a trick i'm thinking ben. it's not the, w- that's your name gizal greens that's what the trick answer see that's what i was that's like it's, trick i don't think it's gonna be that but they do eat they do eat guys or greens but not in the stables in Rob. the stables they're fed Carrots. Yes! <laughs> it. it is carrots. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's just yeah. not canon as far as I'm it concerned. Is yeah, it's stable. It's because they're higher in nutrients. They love Geisha Greens. There's two answers that have made me feel like a heretic heretic now. <laughs> Jesus yeah. and now feeding Chocobo's carrots. <laughs> yeah. Look, I read it on fandom.com. So it's true as far as I can, I'm concerned. Question 12. Final Fantasy 12's protagonist is Vaughn. What does he dream of becoming? Rob, <sighs> Sky Pirate. Yeah. <laughs> my name is Ben my name is Ben <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the grunting as Clive is coming yeah. back to you yeah <laughs> I'm on six points now by the you way you are you've won you've, done, you've done really well zero. I'm just happy to be here how many points have you got Ben I don't know you've got three, three. oh okay Great. Rob's keeping down I am. <laughs> I'm gonna win I have to hello I like Final Fantasy <laughs> <laughs> question 12 question 13 sorry what are summons called? Ben. Yeah? Yeah? In but, Final Fantasy Thirteen. Well, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> what are they called? Come on. Are they called g- Gestalt? No. Rob. No. Eidolons. Yeah. Eidolons. <laughs> they, but they take a Gestalt form. Sorry. Yeah, yeah there you go. They are called Eidolons. Question 14. This is, a, this is a nice one for me. What is the name of the cat race of Final Fantasy Fourteen? Oh, 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 we've got a little bit of silence coming around the room right now. Yeah? Rob. Anyone? Yeah? M- Mikotis. Mi- <laughs> yeah. Mi- Mikotes. Yeah, that's it. They, look, it's spelt like that. So I'm just going to say, yeah, Sephiroth, Mikoti, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know yeah, how to pronounce that's it. That's correct. Yeah, there is uh, M I Q O apostrophe T E. Mikoti. Question 15. Which Norse realm shares its name with the antagonist kingdom of Final Fantasy XV? Mm-hmm. The antagonist kingdom. Antagonist yeah. kingdom. Antagonist kingdom. 
This is where my uh, researchers can <laughs> go in. Rob, yeah? I'm just going to guess. Alfheim. Nope. Rosie. Yeah. Niffelheim. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're thinking it. I was thinking, I was like, do I dare say it? Do, do I, I dare, dare say it? It is indeed Niffelheim. Right. Yes. Question 16. Here we oh, go. God. Here comes the real me. Come on, Clive. So, <laughs> <laughs> who is the dominant of the Phoenix? Rob. Joshua. <laughs> He absolutely pipped you to the post did, there. Yeah. You're just so quick on this quiz. Literally, yeah. By, yeah. by the time you, you said your name, I'm breathing in the air to say to my win. name. I have you to have win to. if it's Final Fantasy. Nine deserve points. Yeah. Nine points. That's actually really good. And you beat you beat uh, Office Tester as well. You got eight. Mm-hmm. So there you go. I'm really and pleased for you. I would yeah. have got more right if other people hadn't got in there first. Thank you for competing. one point. Thank you for competing, everybody. You got a point. I love being on the loser's couch with Rosie. It just feels, It just. it's just a really lovely place. It's a lovely place. Yeah. I mean, because I haven't like you know, I've still got loads of Final Fantasy games I still need to play. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I've got one. Yeah, I've got. I've just played them all, so that's just embarrassing for me. <laughs> <laughs> This is really great, right? Because Rosie has decided to not be competitive this year. So she's gone from being like, Aah! to, yes, I had a great time. And now yeah. you're like, yes, I had a great time too. Is, yeah. Rosie probably knew a lot of those questions, but Rosie in a quiz situation I, is yeah. hilarious to see. Because like, there's like a, it's like a cartoon person who starts running. Like their yeah. legs will be going like, ah, they're not actually going anywhere. Yeah, the, yeah, my brain just goes quicker than my mouth does. Yeah. And then I fumble and then I just trip over and just lie on the floor. <laughs> well, Rosie's lying on the floor with one point. Rob's here with nine. Yes. Ben, you got three. Is that I got right? three fantastic points. Three uh, points. Exciting, exhilarating points. Well, and that is the end of our What's New section. So what is new? Rob is the reigning Final Fantasy champ. Woo. Let's yes. go to the main feature. Okay, it is time for the meat of our discussions now, where Final Fantasy 16 is on the table, and Ben Starr is yes. here to talk all about Final Fantasy. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of start off with just a question to the room as well. For you guys, you're allowed to join in. <laughs> I'll allow it. Thanks, Ash. Uh, just what are your earliest memories with Final Fantasy, and what makes it such a, a special series for all of you? Because I know all of you are proper Final Fantasy fans as well. Yeah. Well, I'll go first because I uh, actually played Final Fantasy um, Oh, nearly, I'm going to guess like eight years ago now, but my first one, so I was quite late to the party, um, but my first one was Final Fantasy VII. I played it on my Vita. Um, so I played it on my Vita and I just remember just playing it everywhere. I remember I had it, uh, the scene with like Red 13 with his dad I played that in the living room on my Vita and my stepdad was watching TV on the other sofa and I fully like just tucked myself into the sofa hiding my tears because he was probably like you know what are you doing over there and I was there like <laughs> <laughs> like just breathing at my Vita holding it clenching it um, it's the saddest moment in 7 oh yeah, it's such a sad opinion. moment yeah. it, oh it got me good just on the sofa <laughs> and um, like playing it on the plane because I was in a long distance relationship at the time and um, so I just remember grinding on flight lights and it was just a fantastic game to play on my vita and then also because i never met yuffie um, but i had my friend who was like just run around the forest i was like i'm running around the forest <laughs> yuffie isn't popping up she's not showing up anywhere i got vincent so that but so i've also got memories of my friend being very angry i didn't find yuffie <laughs> so that's like my earliest memory so i was late to the party but since then i've been trying like marathon in them isn't it great that in that game you can just not meet characters. Yeah. Like that kind of like daring storytelling of just, we're going to withhold a couple of characters that are not essential to the the forward thrust of the plot, which I love about Seven. And li- unless you went, you know, you're speaking to your friends or you had a guide or you had like the very early days of mm. the internet. That's the thing about those days, isn't it? You could, you know, unless you had a friend that knew where to go yeah. and to do that kind of stuff. How are you supposed to know? Yeah. How are you supposed to? Oh, I'll just I'll just hang around in this random forest for a little bit. Maybe there's a secret character that's going to crop up. <laughs> like if you don't actually get it whilst you run through that forest the first time. Yeah. What can you do? I just think I just think that's so amazing that you can have a game where there are just bits of the plot you could just completely miss. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe that's what's so amazing about Final Fantasy because the times that we discovered it, these the vastness of these worlds were not really available to us in any other medium. Like we didn't have TV as freely available as we had now. Movies, you know, that's about an hour and a half. You know, the Hollywood blockbusters that were around in the 90s. And, you know, books seemed relatively impenetrable. And we were offered this window into these worlds that were interactive, that were beautiful, that sounded amazing. And that's what 
especially when I discovered it on PS1, Final Fantasy VIII, VII, IX, those things just, they were telling stories in a way that I had never experienced before. And I think for years after I didn't experience because, you know, this was also the time, the period of time when they were on multiple discs. Yeah. The idea that these things couldn't be contained to one single compact disc. The please insert, I, rem I remember at the end of Final Fantasy VIII's first disc, and then please insert disc two. Mm. I just thought, wow, there's this this moment that's like starting a new book, starting a new chapter of a book. And I, you know, I I think that is what was so special about these games was that um, as a kid, I was be I was being able to experience the stories that my dad was reading in these massive novels, um, and it was being delivered to me in in such a visceral way. I think you have beautifully articulated. Yeah especially that golden era there final fantasy for me that's sort of like the same sort of time period that i discovered it as well seven eight and nine and it is there's like a it's just a magic about it like yeah. uh, i remember playing final fantasy seven over the summer school holidays and just basically not leaving my bedroom for the entire summer holiday just like curtains drawn like proper wake up at seven eight in the morning just final fantasy seven would go on i remember like that i remember very distinctly discovering the whole chocobo breeding side mm -hmm. quest thing in a final fantasy seven and not having discovered it from a guide and actually finding it out by myself and finding the little chocobo sage who lives in that really remote part of the mountains that chocobo you sage. have to fly to him in your high wind airship uh, and every two or three hours he will like divulge an extra bit of information to you about how you can breed the ultimate golden chocobo mm. i remember getting a green chocobo for the first time and a blue one and I think like I played it all the way through the night at one stage just because I was so excited to be like, oh, I'm, I'm on my way to getting the golden chocobo and that, that sense of discovery. Um, but then also, like you say, Ben, like experiencing these stories that video games weren't, weren't telling stories like that, at least that, that, that I had played. Nothing was telling a story in that way. And like the bond I felt with the characters in those games as well was like so incredibly strong. Like I felt like I'm one of these people yeah. they are my actual friends and yeah. it was yeah nothing else has made me feel the same way that those games did in that period yeah and i think for me that's why final fantasy for me will always be special because of that that time i you, it's interesting you said oh um you know i i i felt like i was one of their friends when i first played final fantasy 8 i named all the people after my friends at school oh and i that it it was amazing that i could kind of do that and i felt you know zell wasn't called zell zell was called like one of my best friends at school and so it was a, was that why you didn't get the hot dog question i was going to say is that like the hot dog question you <laughs> yeah. were just richard. like richard yeah. <laughs> richard loves the hot dogs yes. <laughs> yeah richard jones uh, my best friend at school um yeah i i think that uh these games provided a, a a platform for storytelling that i i I don't think I've still experienced since really because you know when I was a kid I when you're 11 you haven't experienced stories like that before and that shift that monumental moment there is a time before Final Fantasy and there is a time after when you're a kid and I think that's something so incredibly special yeah. and it's a template from which I think um, video games kind of were irrevocably changed by Final Fantasy um, the legacy of these games are not just they're just like this is what stories can can tell and the epicness of them is still i think unrivaled um in just how expansive these stories you know the fact that you can explore an entire continent you'd get an airship that you can travel around and 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 carve your own path through this world and is is something that i i felt like i had a party at my fingertips people that i could put it come bring in and out of my party and it was it felt like i was making a dent on this world yeah it wasn't just the world telling me what to do i could make my choices you could just choose to not get knights of the round you know yeah but that reward for getting knights of the round was like the coolest thing you'd ever seen it's like you get to command 12 knights that are going to slash your your enemies to pieces is crazy um yeah i just i as you can tell i quite like final fantasy <laughs> yeah um what has it been for you guys growing up with Final Fantasy as well? Like, how has that kind of informed who you are as a person 
Um, like because there's been so many games across so many years and we're like now they're still coming out Final Fantasy 16 is has come out what's it like watching the games change as you have as well have you felt a bit of a connection to it that way I love I love how like I'm going first just because I haven't it's not as if I like played it on, back on PS1 era um, or anything like that I mean I guess technically my first exposure was Kingdom Hearts mm. when they did the appearances with some characters in the game so for me first of all it's been a case of catching up on these legendary games that I've heard so many people talk about. Mm. Like, so I've played, the order I played them in was like seven, 10, nine, eight. Um, and then I started, oh, I feel like I've done more than that. I've got it like completely wrong. Probably I've played more than that. Um, but for, so for me, it's kind of like a weird mismatch where it's not as if I'm like, Oh, this was the steampunk era or the fan, the fancy era. I can see it from the original, like the pixel remasters playing those. I'm like, Oh, this is like classic mm. fantasy with the crystals and you're the hero and you're the chosen ones and stuff like that. Let's go save the day, which is a charm. I really, really love. Um, so again, like with 16 kind of going back to the fantasy route, I'm like, Oh yeah, it's, it's refreshing to go back to this fantasy world. Um, but I guess for me, it's not as if I've grown up and seen the series change. It's more that I've just dropped in and seen multiple different experiences from a different, as mm -hmm. in like I did seven and I jumped into 10, for example. So you've gone from steampunk to uh, like a more, it, it's kind of fantasy, but still has like, you know, tech sci-fi elements and stuff like that to it. So um, for me, I'm just always like, yeah, this is just a new adventure, a new experience. So I haven't seen like the growth of the how things have changed and evolved and stuff like that. Mm. But you know me, I love new and old video games. Yeah. So I just see everything and I'm just like, this game's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Like all the time. <laughs> how about you guys? I think I would say that maybe Rob and I have probably similar stories in the sense that like we we experienced these when we were really young and they're, they're, they're the thing, right? They're yeah. the story. You had seven, I had eight. Um it's been interesting because I have purchased these games day one. I would be, they would be the thing that I would, I would take the weekend off from, you know, I wouldn't do my homework or I would make sure that I kind of carved out a week to play these games. I, I remember when 13 came out, I made sure that like I wasn't doing anything at university um, <laughs> at the time. And I remember when 15 came out, I, I just called an entire week off work. And I, <laughs> uh, the night before I watched the, um, the anime Brotherhood and then I watched King's Glaive. And then, you know, I really got myself into it. And each, each installment is, um, is a monumental moment in my life, um, including 16 now. Um, and they have changed. And I think what's really nice is that um, each one holds a special place for me because it kind of um, contextualizes where I was in my life at that point. Mm. Like I remember when I was playing 13, I was doing these all nighters and I would, <laughs> I remember calling them um, Ben's series of outstanding mockers. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's when I realized that you could put like the Cadbury's chocolate stuff in coffee. Yeah. And I would, I would, <laughs> I would make myself like a drip, not a drip coffee, like a cafetiere, you know, the kind of like the bialetti things you, yeah. can, you cook on a stove and I'd make that and I'd pour that into some chocolate and I'd make these mockers <laughs> and I'd stay up for like six hours until 6am playing Final Fantasy 13. And it was this, it was this escape, this world I was... I could just jump into and, and uh, like lightning story and the Lassie and it was just this really cool thing and the music and I, yeah, I would just, I would just get completely lost in it. And so every time I look back on these games, I remember where I was at that point in my life and it's, and, and they will always mean something to me in the context of where I was um, 16, obviously being remembering where I am right now, uh, which is, which is kind of crazy. I mean, you've got an incredibly unique twist there. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, our, our story is similar up until a point, but then there's a game where you are the main character <laughs> for Final yeah. Fantasy. I mean, this is the thing I've been wanting to ask you, right? Like, similarly, we have grown up with this series and I think you're absolutely right in saying that each game marks like a, a particular point in your life. Like yeah. 13 was massive for me because it was the game that essentially launched the, my career trajectory now. Like I wrote a review of Final Fantasy 13 and sent it into official PlayStation magazine. And off the back of that, got some work experience and that's sort of like how my career took off. So that was like a seminal thing for me. 
what what is it like <laughs> being the main character of a Final Fantasy game, having had all of that experience up yeah. to where you are now? Like, how do you even rationalise that? You don't rationalise it. <laughs> um, I uh, it still feels super strange being here with you all because. Um, like I've watched all of your <laughs> content um, for years. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've said to you guys, like ah! I watched the day, the day, the first day that I ever recorded Final Fantasy 16 was a day that I watched um, you two do Chocobo Hot and Cold. Quick. Uh, and it was just, yeah, it was Rosie going, quack, the quack, quack, quack montage. The there was quack a quack monta montage after How that. Oh, it was over a yeah. hundred times I said <laughs> yeah. quack, like. Be because I, I, um, I, I recognize, it was just fate really. Like I recognize that this is a franchise that has s such a storied history. Um, and uh, I had to keep it secret for years. And so I didn't really have to deal with any of the stuff outside of it because probably about four people in my life knew that I was doing this. So I didn't have to think about what what it would be like to voice the lead in a Final Fantasy game because I just couldn't talk about it. Mm. And now, as I'm able to kind of come out into the world and say, hello, everyone, uh, my name's Ben and I play Clive in Final Fantasy 16. Sorry, my name's Ben Star. <laughs> my name's Ben Star. <laughs> and I play Clive in Final Fantasy 16. That uh, is very strange to me because Clive is a character that I have... Uh, spent so much time with personally trying to kind of really delve into the the psyche of him as a person and now having the opportunity to share him with everyone is um is a real treat but also strange because all this work that i've done that is so incredibly personal to me and so private is now being shared with people and they're responding to it um and now that I see the immense amount of publicity that's going into it, the posters everywhere, the events, meeting people who are saying that even just playing the demo, that what happened in that is really moving them is, is, is crazy. Yeah, my sister, who I've not spoken to for probably about two years, messaged me the other day to say that she, you know, played the demo of Final Fantasy 16 and, you know, I used to play Final Fantasy with her when I was a kid and she was like the Final Fantasy 16 demo is amazing like I've not like I've not been into a Final Fantasy game since like 10 yeah like this is amazing um so I think like even like even just the demo is really hitting people yeah it's it, a good demo it is it is and it's a good teaser for what's to come and I think there is so much more to explore in this world and it's 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 a great way in because it shows kind of a base level what the team have decided to focus on and that is the humanity of this world um at, at the heart of it is a story about um loss and redemption I think um but it builds on that that idea and then goes how far can we go with it and i think maybe some people have been put off in the past thinking oh they're these big grand stories about you know fighting god um uh but at the heart we went no what is what is the human cost of this world mm. there are these massive beasts but um how does it how does how do they have to reckon with their own humanity despite having this 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 power to destroy worlds um and it's it's a it's a cool thing. But to answer your question, I don't know. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty pretty cool. I think um, it still feels strange that I that people s say that to me. But it's 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 lovely. So thank you. Oh, that being an actual part of Final Fantasy history is crazy. Like as someone who's grown up with it, it must just be completely. Maybe just, it will ah. maybe it will sink in in years to come. Yeah. yeah, and when I don't know Final Fantasy twenty five is coming out, yeah, and you're looking back on the series as a whole, and you're like, there was there was my piece of history there Final yeah. Fantasy 16 yeah. so, I would literally just cry or if, if for example like, as in like cause, so I grew up for example with Crash Bandicoot Spyro and Lara uh, or Tomb Raider and I was like if I just even voiced a side character in a Tomb Raider game or something I'd just be like this, like Lara was such an influence to me like mm. you say with Final Fantasy with you telling stories and everything I would just fully just be crying like every day like I'm so grateful I mean I think that's the great thing is that because 16 is just completely new you don't have to play any other games beforehand I, like I understand the legacy of these games but it's like you get to build Clive from the ground up mm. so I didn't have the pressure of all of these other actors who've played Clive beforehand I have to step into their shoes it was like who um, 
who do you want Clive to be mm. uh, as a person and how do you want him to be received by this world? And that was really freeing. The pressure obviously thinking, well, this is, a, you know, at its heart, this is the first one where you play as a singular character. So there's a lot of pressure on making him uh, a character that people would want to play as and you would want to empathise with his story, which is hard. Um, but it's it's something that we really, really, really focused on. And it was like, how at all points can we make him a character that you would want to spend time with and you would understand why he would do these things? And I think the demo really helps that. The demo really helps that because yeah. we actually get to play his backstory. Yeah. We get to feel his pain. We get to experience his loss. Um, and he's not just a person who turns up and goes, I'm really sad. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you can understand it. And I've seen lots of people's reactions to it. And they're also very sad yeah. <laughs> when they when they experience it. And ah, what a thing to do. Just like, make so many people sad. Very what a joy. sad. Yeah. But I will say the game, uh, there is a lot of joy in this game as well. Mm. Um but it's it's about finding those th those dynamics, that balance between between the things. So when it hits home, you've got to fall in love with these characters so that we can break your heart. Mm, yes. Well, it seems to be working so far. If the okay. demo is anything to go Make by, me think of Torgal because I love Torgal to pieces, Torgal's and I pet him after every. He's such a good boy, and just hearing you was like, oh, like you love these characters, and you're going to cry now. It's just like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, to I've told you the whole time, Rosie. Torgal's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. You better be fine. Because oh. I tell you what, <laughs> I will film myself. I'm not even going to look at Ben. I'm not even going to look at Ben. <laughs> no, it's the wrong question. I have not finished the game yet. Neither of you. Really. No, no, no. Uh, so I'm just not going to look Kill at Ben. Kill no. the dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't. Because he is actually. I actually even. I even. I like the dog. So yeah, yeah I'm on dog side. I want to ask what your favourite Final Fantasy game is. As now you're literally in 16, yeah. like, can that be your favourite game or is it? My favourite game will always be my first, and that's yeah. eight, simply because of what it did to my life mm. and how it changed me. Um, I, I, I've said this before, I will say it and until my dying day, I would uh, go to bat for any of them. If you were to sit me down in a room and we were to have a debate about why you say, right, Ben, you have to defend 13, you have to defend 12, I would gladly do it because I think they all have such incredibly strong points to them. Uh, but eight will always be the one that changed my life and therefore it will always be the one that I, I'm eternally indebted to as a game. And it will mm. be not just my favourite in the series, it'll be my favourite game because it's yeah because it showed me the possibilities of what video games can really do mm. and um i love i i think they're all just outstanding pieces of art but um eight's my one mm. how about you guys seven yeah seven for me although sometimes sometimes i wonder <gasps> whether it could be nine like it depends am i in a am i in a steampunk mood today or am i in a medieval nine has the fantasy cat. You nine sold them to me as cats. Nine has some cats. Moogles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this but, finger's up because you sold them to me as cats. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're like, it's yeah. a cat game. And yeah. I was like, why, why I think did you say it's has a cat the, game? I think nine has the best Moogles. Yeah. Nine is wonderful. Yeah. I love nine a lot. I think it's just, again, like you said, eight was your first one. Seven was my first one. There is just like a magic to seven. Like those characters as well, so ridiculously iconic. I don't know what it is about that band of characters, but they're just so cool. It's like, yeah. you know, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia levels of iconic. It's mm. just, they're just amazing. And, you know, I, I love, I love being in their crew. Yeah. It's, it's so good. When you think about Seven, I think Seven is so definitive because you could line all of those characters up in silhouette and you'd be able to tell, yeah. you'd be yeah. able to tell who every single one of them Great is. Great character design. Really amazing character design. I'm just having a look at who we've got up here. So we've got, we've got, Sepiroth. Yeah. That's him. There Erith. He is. <laughs> yeah. Clued. <laughs> and then a bunch from uh, Final Miss, Fantasy 15. Mr. Clued. Yeah. Look, yeah. At, look at Cloud on his bike. That's, yeah. that's my yeah. favourite that's thing ever. I love that. I have to go to the, the wide shot for that one. The wide I, shot. I do love, Rob, that you talk about Nine and that how many fans have reached out to me recently and said that their favourite is Nine. My favourite's Nine. It's, mag it's, ma it's magical. It is. It is so magical i've always described it as the final fantasyist final fantasy yeah. ever because it, it was like it was it was marked the end of that ps1 era of final mm -hmm. fantasy and it felt very much like an homage to everything that had come before as well there's so many elephant element elephants there's so many <laughs> elements in nine that um hark back to those original games as well even the down to the design of vivi he looks like the black mage from final fantasy one yeah like 
Garnet's cloak is like the white mage from Final Fantasy One, mm-hmm. and it was it, that was the end of an era. It was like here's the first era of Final Fantasy, and it felt like Nine was the closing chapter of that. You couldn't have a a, a, a more stark artistic change between Nine and Ten. Yeah, and I think that's what makes the series great but i think nine there is just something so incredibly timeless about the music yes about the character design um you're right vv i think is he's one of my favorite video game characters ever <laughs> yeah i think he might be i think he might be the best final fantasy character I think like a so. distillation of what makes final fantasy final fantasy is not just vv's character design but his story yeah uh what everything what pretty much is that is about and i think it's uh, so many people resonate with vv's story and they feel seen through that i think is really amazing um but i just think that yeah nine nine is amazing and like that alexandra of alexandria fight that you just see that huge fight with bahama is yeah is is just incredible <laughs> so yeah nine just yeah. I just love yeah. it to pieces. Like Seven was my first one and for ages I was like, oh, Seven's my favourite. But then Rob was the, uh, when I told Rob when I first joined Access that I just finished Seven and I was playing 10 at the time, Rob immediately just said, you've got to play Nine. You just have to play Nine. Um, and the stream that you watched us play, that was my genuine Final Fantasy Nine save, my genuine first time playing the Amazing. game. Um, and I just loved I couldn't put it down I loved everything about it I loved the cast like you say the music the style I love how theatrical it was um, in the sense like you know the opening it's all based in the theatre for the opening but even throughout the game I'll always remember there's a scene with uh, like a love letter and then you've got the whole cross lovers kind of scene and you know oh there's a bit of confusion here and stuff like that it just reminded me so much of Shakespeare theatre and I was just like this is just such a wonderful story and a way of telling the story and I love the cast um, so yeah it was just (laughs) like nine is just my personal favorite i love it it's my favorite soundtrack as well yeah nine oh melodies of life at the end still makes me cry so many bangers the the burmesia theme and freya's theme yeah it's my single for so melancholy oh it's my favorite (laughs) sad music to listen to i want to listen to something sad today i'll listen to freya's theme you guys on the final fantasy sadness man you're just like oh the weeping i love it um, I think we should move on. Sadness is just happiness. That is a great impression for, of us, though. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you really nailed yeah, us. All three of you bundled yeah. into one. I there. love being sad. Yeah, oh Fancy made me cry. <laughs> I would like us to move on to Final Fantasy 16 because we are going on. So I'd like us to talk about Final Fantasy 16 a bit because this is our little preview as well as everything else. So some first impressions of the game, how you're finding it. Just unleash, unleash. Well, we've got the we've got the the main video of all my impressions on the, on the channel yeah. now. Um, not while we're recording this, because we're recording this in the past. But by the time you're listening to us, it'll, it will be there. Um, like 16, I've always thought like, you know, Final Fantasy is never a series that's happy to stay put. Like mm. it's a series that always likes to innovate, always likes to change. And 16 is unlike any Final Fantasy game I've ever played, but also feels incredibly Final Fantasy-ish at the same time. And that, feels like a strange thing to say uh, but hopefully in the videos on the channel i sort of explain it in a bit more depth but there's it's got the soul it's got that beating heart to it and i find like the, the cast of final fantasy 16 i think is the most lovable cast mm. since nine i would say mm. like that's you. that those, no. that, <laughs> core, that core trio of um clive sid and jill I just, I love them. I love spending time with them. And it's not just them. It's like your extended family in your little hideaway hub that you have. There are, and Torgal, yes. Very important. uh, The goodest boy. The goodest boy. The goodest boy. Uh, But there's so many people in that little hub that you go to. There's Karen, the item shop owner. I love Karen. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) she's great. uh, um, Blackthorn, the blacksmith. I just, they all, uh, first, when you first meet them, they're just, oh, here's the NPC for the item shop. And by, by the end of it, you feel like they're, your extended family and your friends in and i haven't felt that way about a final fantasy cast since final fantasy 9 like there's sometimes sometimes there's things that just resonate with you more than others and in that respect it's it's felt so final fantasy to me because it has reminded me how i used to feel when i played those original games on 7 8 and 9 like i want to go back and play it tonight the main reason i want to go back and play it tonight is because i want to spend more time you know with Clive and with Torgal and with Jill and I want to I want to see where their story goes like I'm mm. desperate to see where it goes and it's that being hooked by the story more than anything else I, mean, I think the combat is awesome it's obviously a big change to go fully real time um, you know some fans will probably like the turn-based style more 
I quite enjoy the real time stuff, but even more than all of that, it's it's that story that in sixteen has absolutely hooked me mm. completely, and I just can't get enough of it. Yeah, have you played through it yet, Ben, or is it? Are you waiting for release? Or um, I've I've been very fortunate enough to know what happens in the story, yeah. Um, yeah. and I I kind of uh, I'm glad that what you've said res- resonates with you in that way because this is this is a game about characters and story yoshi p said it multiple times that was the focus of everything we needed to make these characters completely lovable and you're right you know it's clive's story but it's uh it's also <laughs> these other people's stories yeah. gav's story it's, oh yeah gav. It's, I love, I love gav. gav when you're talking about npcs i was like i love gav <laughs> it's Ga- gav gav is just so incredibly lovable and he's gonna be He's, he's going to be the internet's new darling. I'm convinced will, of it. Yeah. Like all the memes will be Gav memes. Yeah, Gav is a perf is 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 a perfect distillation of of what this game is, and that's kind of lovable rogues going on an adventure. Yeah, and yes, there is a lot of sadness in this world. There's a lot of darkness in this world, but there's also a lot of light, and there's a lot of people looking for that light. Um, and you have the likes of Jill and Gav, who are people who constantly pursue that. And I love that about this this game and how it is a story and world that you want to get lost in, but also it's a world which has existed long before you. And you feel like there is so much depth to be mined mm-hmm. there. You know, we talk about the the fallen, the race that, that, that were here before, yeah. the, the, the people who, you know, were trying to soar too high and maybe maybe fell to earth i think it's such an interesting concept that we have human beings living amongst literally the remnants of this fallen civilization uh that you get to explore is is really interesting and i love that as well it feels like this world is incredibly lived in yes um and uh you know it's it's I won't say, but you know, there, there are opportunities to explore that. Um, not just, you know, outside of the main plot, but also, you know, inside quests as well. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. I really like as well with it. So I'm my first person, I'm just completely hooked on it. Like as soon as I get home, I'm like, Final Fantasy 16. Like, you know, I, every, every time it's like, oh, you've got to cook dinner. I'm like, that's less time with Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> um, but, Takeaways um, all yeah. week, baby. Oh, week, baby. <laughs> but um, one thing I'm really liking about the story at the moment is that it is a really dark and quite an angry world as well which is something that is quite new for Final Fantasy so that was quite I mean I'm sure if you've played the demo you can already see how much of a hard hitter it is Mm. but um but despite this, there are still some really fun tongue in cheek little bits of humour and just like just fun. Yeah, there was a cutscene last night. I don't know if you've got here so I won't say, but just made me laugh out loud. It was just so good. Oh there was one really enjoyed it. There was one last night where you're with Sid and Jill and you've just gone to a location and it's uh let's just say it's, it's a sexy place. And um, <laughs> Wait, and, I know where you are. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. there's, there's yeah. a character you just hear in the background making noises. I was like, wow, that voice <laughs> actress. Sexy noises. It was like that's the first voice actress to make that kind of sexy noise in a Final Fantasy game. I was like, you're What's? forgetting LeBlanc in Final Fantasy X too, Rosie. I haven't played ten two. Uh, it's the Does, massage. There you go. The <laughs> massage mini game. <laughs> the massage yeah. mini game. Oh my god! Is that another <laughs> yeah. one? Yeah. There's a massage mini game in yeah in ten yeah. two. Yeah, it goes hard. Oh yeah. my god! Well, which well, Whoa, which well, case? No, don't need to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about it. All the sexy. But noises. in this context, you're correct. In this context. <laughs> in this context, then. But um, but like that's what I mean. Like just watching that, even though you're in this grueling world, it's still just filled with surprises. Where I'm sat there, and I've just got like this huge smile on my face because, like you say, the characters and the way they respond to things. Um, like <laughs> Jill and Clive responding to that moment that I just witnessed last night. Well, not witnessed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> heard like, heard yeah. last Active night. Active time law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about this noise. <laughs> what Describe does it, mean? it to me. Yes. <laughs> But like just hearing the characters respond to it and like all of them respond, it's just, you know, you feel that bond and you understand completely why they react in that way. And it's just like lighthearted and fun as well. Yeah. So it's just filled with surprises as well. That's what I'm really enjoying as well. Oh, see, like uh, I mentioned earlier to you guys, like I have been blessed with the demo only. These guys have been playing the full game, which has been really interesting to hear about. And I'm so excited to get my hands like properly on it. This is will be my first Final Fantasy, which Are is... Are you going to play it? 
Uh, yeah, I am. I'm excited I for am. you. I think it's just miserable enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, like, uh, there's I'll, plenty of misery. Yeah. yeah. And there's plenty of, like, very, very, like, where you were saying how dark it is. Definitely the darkest Final Fantasy mm. I think I've played. Yeah. But it's brutal as well. Mm. Um, I just have the lots, goblins. Lots of stuff. Oh, yeah. And the goblins. Yeah. Yeah. Lots for you to enjoy, yeah. for sure. I yeah. Think. So I'm excited to, to kind of to dive into it and to have my Final Fantasy moment that everyone's been talking about, like, that is shaping them and changing the world yeah, be your like, first Final Fantasy yes like. it's me it's my turn now so that is incredibly exciting I have so many more questions that I've written down but there's been so much interesting chat um, I don't think we have time for many more I think one thing that I would like to ask you Ben is how did this happen like how did how did you how did you do this how did you get into uh, working on Final Fantasy was it something you sought out or was it something that sought you I wrote a letter no, I didn't. Uh, that would be amazing, though. Oh, dear, I dear, so ready. Good story, then. dear Mr. Fantasy, <laughs> um, I write to you from the depths of my bedroom. Um, I, uh, yeah, I famously have a very deep bedroom. Apparently, um, no, I just um, the the story is that I auditioned mm. uh, for a small role called Tristan. That was the code name for the character, mm. and. Um, I uh, didn't do a very good job, I think, in the room. I uh, did about three lines and then it went quiet. And then the performance director said, Ben, would you... Um, would you leave? <laughs> would you please leave to your deep, deep bedroom? Um, <laughs> said, would you mind reading these? And they gave me um, the lines for a character called Clint Richmond. Um, and I... Clint re- Richmond, sorry. Clint that's Richmond. such a yeah, good yeah, code yeah. name. Clint Richmond. And I I just went, yep, sure. And I kind of had a look at them for about 30 seconds. And I went, great, cool. And I was go. And you just, I just did a sight read. And um, they were very emotional. Um, and really brilliantly written lines that just had a lot of character and depth to them and I just felt like I could really get into it and then I left and four days later I was on the set of Midsummer Murders um filming uh The Sting of Death with <laughs> Griff Reese Jones and uh yeah then they said you've got the part in a video game um didn't tell me what it was yeah. but they said it was gonna be about 40 hours of recording and then um they asked if I would come back in to audition for my younger self um, they said it wasn't going to affect whether you were going to have the the other character. That's fine, but the younger self does appear in, in, a, in at the beginning of the game. If you'd come back and just see if you can do it, it'd be very convenient if you could. I came in, uh, but beforehand they told me um, here's some more context, mm. and they the context was that it's Final Fantasy. Yeah. Uh, the context was uh, the SIDS, the, the the crystals, all of it. They they gave me the context and I screamed. Oh my um, God. Were you just like, oh, this is me doing Young Clive. Yeah, well, I, 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 thought, I thought they were going to, I genuinely thought they were going to um, hear my Young Clive and think Ben is so bad. He doesn't, he shouldn't do this because that, that, that yeah. it's it's not like I I climbed up a mountain to get this role or that I I pursued it or that it's my been my life dream that I've always just kind of been hunting for this thing. It just happened, mm. and I felt very unworthy of that because this is this is the greatest thing that could possibly happen to me, genuinely, um, because this is the most important franchise in any media to me and to my life and my development as a person. And they said, hey, here you go. You can play the lead in the next important, you know, installment of this franchise. It's it's mad. So I was always worried that they were going to say, Ben, you're not good enough. We're going to get rid of you because that's good things don't happen to me in that way. Yeah, but it, it's so well deserved. And you do such an amazing job as Clive, literally from the little bit I've said. And young Clive young as well. Clive, yeah. Clive, that you got him, you got your audition in. I did, yeah. So you, you just revel in being great, man. You, Thanks. You've done it. It's that four years of work. Yeah. It's sick. It's yeah. really good. And it's super earned from all the work that you put into thank it. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And it I also just thank you to everyone who's been nice about it. It's very, very good, Ben. It's very good. It's very good. I sort of like picked out the voice acting I think the voice acting throughout the entire game is really, really strong. Um, but I think, you know, at the risk of sounding like an awful sycophant, I think your performance is amazing. So no, thank you. Congratulations. Thank I you. I can't stop clo- uh, quoting Clive. 
Like oh, every, thanks. like I said, uh, uh, like whenever I play it, whenever Clive says a line, I have to have a little go myself. Um, <laughs> but also, like in general, you know, if I'm just around the house or something, and someone does something wrong, I'm like, I'll kill you. Or, like I just can't help but just be like, I just have to do it because it's just, it just stuck with me. Your performance has. So. Thank you. Oh yeah, God. that's that. That I didn't realize was going to be as effective as it was. I remember doing that scene, and actually everyone being a bit like, Oh, Ben, that was a bit much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they said go for it you know and i think there's just something about clive because i think there's 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 he's quite tightly wound for a lot of it you know he has to be quite stoic but there are moments in this game where he just lets go mm. because he can't hold on to it anymore and i've described that moment in the demo as his soul leaving his body it's it's there is no breath left in him as though his entire being has been ripped out of him and he has to spend the next however many years of his life, 13, 18 years of his life, finding that purpose again. And um, that's what we did. And I think that was what was so freeing because he isn't just a, 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 a stoic edgelord. He has these moments of intense vulnerability with people that he trusts. With Jill, he is able to kind of unleash that a little bit and be a lot more vulnerable than he would be around someone else. He's not just a classic, I'll save the day hero. He's so, he's looking for just someone to hold his hand and say, everything's going to be okay. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really great that I got to do that. That's really cool. Right, right. We're going to end that there. And get into some more Clive for some Clive Mints of the Week. <laughs> that was just, that was just me again. making a point. Yeah. We're going to move on to our Comments of the Week section now. So let's cue the music. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. It's time for the real music, which is our tuneful singing. Now, Ben Starr already knows our delightful little ditty, apparently. I apparently. Do. Apparently. It's time to prove it, hey? Yeah. So we have we have decided an order. We're gonna to commit to it. I'm gonna see how it goes. Let's go. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time for comments of the week. <laughs> Very good. How angelic. Lovely stuff. Well done, everybody, for that beautiful rendition. We're getting better at that every week. Yeah, it's not even funny anymore. It's just, it's just good. We should start yeah. a band. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. love that song. <laughs> just that. Loop. Yeah. <laughs> Sell out stadiums. Oh, just five seconds. Oh, delicious. Yeah. Right. So our comments of the week this week are slightly different than our usual comments of the week. They are five for Clive this week, Ooh, which boy. are five questions. For okay. Clive that have come from our community that I am going to ask you. So, Ben Starr, if yeah. you could please do your best Clive voice yes. and answer as Clive himself, okay. that would really suit what I've planned here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get ready for this. I'm going to get ready. ready. This okay. is exciting. Then they're, they're not, they're just silly questions. So just Fantastic. How, however Clive would feel about it, just get in the So as Lucy Clive, not as, uh, I'll just answer the questions. Yeah, as Clive. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, you're Clive now. Uh, yeah, I am. You're Clive. Okay, so this is from Toby. And he asks, what's your favourite pizza topping? And Hot, Mask ask, Hot Max asks, is Chocobo pizza a thing? My favourite pizza topping is pepperoni. And I would never, ever put a Chocobo on a pizza. <laughs> 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 I don't wrong? know what he's doing there. But <laughs> yeah, <he's... laughs> What's wrong with Chocobo on pizza? Well, I, I just would never, I just, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's I just, worse than pineapple. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, apparently they're very nasty to eat. Okay, oh, so Demistic asks. Thank you. Sorry, sorry for the thank I'm just, thank, I'm just thanking the question. I know, just the really fact that Domestic, Domestic has asked a question is, I'm just so thankful for that question. <laughs> okay, so Domestic has asked. Thank you. What is the most Ben Star thing about Clive? The most Ben Star thing about Clive is the fact that he can't really stand still. He always just shuffles around like a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad that you guys know each other in real life as well, Clive. Pardon? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Ben. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm glad that you guys have met each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, take, I take pictures for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get me more pictures of yeah. Clive. <laughs> I do tasteful nudes for Clive. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, on from that. Great. Clint986. Carl Clint. Yes. Wait, what? Who? Clint Richmond. Yes. Yeah. Clint Richmond986 says, do you say chocobo or chocobo? Que? I say chocobo. It's the only correct answer. It's, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I literally cheered when I first heard the pronunciation of Chocobo in yeah. Final Fantasy Sixteen. I realised that when we were saying it, I even said to the team, I went, wow, this is canon now. In in At least in Valisthea, it's Chocobo. I'm sure, you know, in, in Spira, in, mm. in, it'll, be, it'll be Chocobo for other things. But in Valisthea, it is pronounced Chocobo. Oh, that's very nice. Makes me very happy. I said I said Chocobo earlier, but purely because I thought that's how you're supposed to say it. I didn't it want is. to well, be yeah. called up again. No, no, but it is. In other, it in is other acceptable. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. I, but Chocobo is, I, I like Chocobo as the way of saying it. So Saint Fan 24 <laughs> Clive. Thank you. <laughs> Clive, this is a question for you to ask, which is, Clive, can you personally ask Rosie if you're on her boyfriend list? <laughs> 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 oh, he's having a little civil war. Now Ben so. knows of my boyfriend list. Video but game Clive, boyfriend list. Yeah, my video game boyfriend list. Oh, Clive, you better be on there, is he? Yeah, like, <laughs> be embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving this, Rosie. Sorry to barge in. I was just wondering uh, if it would be at all possible. Could I possibly be on your boyfriend list? <laughs> I know my. My friend Sid is a very beautiful man, but when I look into your eyes, I see, I see a kinship with us. <laughs> I see a connection. I see great power in you. So please, could we be something, anything? <laughs> <laughs> Crying. <laughs> <laughs> Clive. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Rosie. Thank you for barging into my room. I'm sorry about the door. Your bedroom's not very deep at all, Rosie. No, I don't have a deep bedroom, unlike Ben. Um, yes, Clive. Actually, as we've been, you know, venturing together, I felt this this bond as well. And I was actually, as I've been playing more, uh, my rule is it's like one per game. And Clive has actually been, you know, with myself and Sid, we we got close, but Clive has just got a bit closer to me now. So uh, Clive will can make a, will make an appearance on my boyfriend list. Is it official? Huh? Clive's on the video game boyfriend list. The video game boyfriend oh, list. Yeah. You heard it here first, everyone. <laughs> but I, like, so still the rule is like one per franchise. Like if I'm going like really oh, big wow. in depth, and I haven't finished sixteen yet, so I can't make that overall call. Yeah. Until I finished it. Who was it previously? Well, for Final Fantasy, uh, it was Oren. I don't know who that is. Or for Final Fantasy Ten. I love him because every time we fight, he goes enough, and then he like does his attack and stuff. He's a really cool guy. Do you think uh, Oran and who would beat Oran or Clive in a fight? Who would win? Well, at the mo I mean, Oran I always quote all the time, and Clive, as I've said, I'm quoting all the time. Really, just to get in the boyfriend list, I just, just a yeah. Also, I, I put you on the spot. I did barge into your room, and <laughs> uh, the doors absolutely smashed. Yeah, I mean, I locked it and everything to yeah. try and keep people away, and Clive was just so desperate yeah. to be on my boyfriend list yeah. Yeah. that. It's also, a coveted list, man. It's like the Forbes top 100, like Rosie's boyfriend list. list. Also, I, you know, I, I think that in this game, there's lots of top tier boyfriends. Sid is a top tier boyfriend mm. on this. I just yeah. think that he's just, he's an all round great guy. Clive's lovely. Clive's a lovely guy. But yeah. I, I won't mind if, you know, other characters, Gav, you know. <laughs> I do love Gav as well. But Gav's more like my best mate. Like every time I see Gav, I'm like, Gav, yeah, yeah, yeah. how yeah, you yeah. doing, buddy? Who is on your list now? What in general? Yeah, um, it's oh long. God. It's long. Um, <laughs> I thought it was just ten. Yeah. Well, no. So, so it's ten, but you know, it does because things change all no. the time, and that doesn't mean that they're necessarily gone. It just might mean that they're pushed back into. Is, he, is Kiryu? Yes, Kiryu is on the list. However, <laughs> Kiryu it is like very close to being replaced by Ichiban yeah, because Ichiban. Ichiban is I just love him to pieces and with with Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth I'm just so excited I, the fact I'm so excited to learn more about Ichiban and stuff and I just love his character I'm like I think Ichiban might actually overtake Kiryu wow. which yeah. you know which is a big deal for me because I'm like yeah. I love Kiryu <laughs> you, so much you did have Heavy Rain Man on there but after talking to Rosie about oh, the, this, that's the worst the inclusion. problematic part this was before Honestly. I knew the twist Bad. of Heavy Rain. Yeah, but he was still on there when we asked you and you were so like, wait, well, heavy, heavy, heavy Rain Man as in... Scott the, Shelby? 
He was on the boyfriend list. And then I found out about the twist and then I hadn't that's updated like, the list. That's like kids calling their, kids calling their, their parents calling their kids Khaleesi and then seeing the end of <laughs> Game of Thrones yeah. and being like, this was a huge mistake. Yeah, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh no, this is bad. This yeah. is bad. Um, yeah, yet, so yet, yet you kept him on for a little while. That was because that was when I hadn't updated the list. It's the danger. And mm. then when people are like, "Oh, who's on the list?" I just thought about the list prior, and I was like, "Oh no, hang away, I mean, I need to update the list because he shouldn't be on there anymore because I know the truth." <laughs> well, it's, yeah, you're in lofty company, Scott Shelby. No, and not anymore. It's Embryo. Embryo. Embryo yeah. He's still there. I love Embryo to pieces from Crash Bandicoot. Sully. Sully. Victor. Sully. He's the originator, so he's always number yeah. one. So Victor yeah. Sullivan. He's there. Um... Now let's just say Kiryu slash Gigi Ban, um, and I'm just trying to. Oh my god, I've got to write it down. Yeah, I like need to a write it down. Scroll. Yeah, we'll put and it on like, a community post. It, maybe put it on the wall here and just yeah. have it there as. Oh, we should pin it. Yeah, and we'll then do a, like a proclamation. It's like a list, right? And you can just like move them with magnets and like mm. when they change. Because that's the thing, it is changing. Because there's so many games coming out and so many new characters and yeah. everything. So recency bias, then. So actually, you're you're just you're not you're here for a good time, not a long time with these boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Victor Sullivan. He's always been number one. Yeah, and that's but you just said there's new games coming out. So apparently, he's replaceable. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's never replaceable. He's yeah. always number one. Always on the hunt for a new boyfriend. How do you let Clive in so easily? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Clive just came into my front door and asked to be on the list. He was very desperate. He was very I apologise for him. Yeah, I apologise. Yeah, if he wants to be on my list, it's a very he's very. He was Please, out of Rosie, breath. anything. I'll do anything. For you. <laughs> <laughs> right, there is one more question, but I—it's on my phone. Not, oh, okay. Not be, just because I forgot to copy just it over. Just a fun text. Um, hang on a second. It's just one of Ash's five. Can you get milk? Question number five is Dazza Boy O four asking question, which always makes you think. Question. Tell me, what do you think yeah. about me? Um, I think that as well. Yeah, yeah. Genuinely, when, except mine's a question. How do you like this knowledge there, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 that one. yeah. Oh, here yeah. we go. <laughs> I bought it. Okay. Um, if you could become a brand new icon, what kind of icon would you be, and what would you name yourself? If I could be a brand new, a mm. br- like an, an icon that doesn't exist. Yeah. What's Clive's like vibe? If he's thinking, he's like, oh, I'd like to be a big porcupine <laughs> <laughs> okay um <laughs> so I'm just picturing a big porcupine the size of titan just like rummaging around yeah I'll, I'll just do that yeah if i could be any icon i'd probably be a giant porcupine scuttling around spiky back <laughs> and no one could jump on me i'd be prepared Pricking things left and right. No one would attack me. Clive. <coughs> dominant of porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pastiche. It's a pastiche of Clive. It's not a real Clive. Oh my god. I love how the you know, the icon doesn't have a name. Like the icon is called Porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's 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 porcupine. It's porcupine. Yeah, it's very, very literal. I like how it doesn't even sound like por- porcupine, like the word. It's like porcupine as well. Porcupine. Yeah. Porcupine. porcupine. <laughs> he, sounds porcupine. Like a, he sounds like a reporter from the 1950s. Like, yeah. hey, porcupine, nice to meet you. <laughs> oh my God, that should be the name of Rosie's auctioneer for yeah. a year as They're well. Porcupine. Yeah, yeah I, I, just for anybody who doesn't know what that means, Rosie was an excellent auctioneer when she was younger and it was what she was destined to be. Yeah. Yeah. She chose this life instead. Say something fast for us, Rosie. Yeah. <laughs> Say something fast. The thing is though, <laughs> so I've got, again, a lot because my brother he's um also like it does an auctioneer in, <laughs> he's also in like uh, covers video games and stuff on youtube and he speaks really really fast uh, so i everyone always thinks i speak fast but when you compare it to him which people do a lot they're just like they're like oh he speaks much much faster and then stuff so whatever i do he's going to be faster before people in the comments say oh kid chris is faster and i'm like i know he's faster <laughs> <laughs> this is a competition okay but we what do you want it. me to sell uh, sell my tablet. Can I hold your tablet, please? No. It helps me get in no, the room. I've got all. The, you're, they'll see the. Just look at it. Okay. Sell Clive. Sell Clive. Sell Clive. What is it? I'll sell him as a bodyguard. Okay. Yeah. 
And over here we've got a lovely gentleman over here. You look at all the black and red outfit over here. Look at that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sword. Do you want that wonderful sword protecting you? I'll tell you what, you can have that sword protecting you. This man over here, I haven't even given you his name yet. It's called Clive. What a wonderful name. I'll tell you what, if you ever wanted a Clive in your household, you can have a Clive in your household right now. Clive Roseford over here, everyone outside the number. Oh, okay, I see we've got a bit over there. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, we've got a bit over there as well. Excellent. You can see his hair. It's lovely and scraggly, you know. We've got a bit over here as well. I'll tell you what, the hair is a real selling point. Another one over here. I tell you what, people are just loving Clive's hair at the moment. I haven't even really told you how much of a good bodyguard he is. He's really fast. He's really quick. He's really strong. He has magic abilities as well. Hey, is your light bulb gone out in your house? Clive will just electrocute it and it'll fix itself. He's a multi kind of guy. You want a fire put on for your candle? Boom, Clive can sort that out for you. So not only will you be protected, you ah, we got a little bit over there. I tell you what, someone over here wants to get their chicken cooking in the oven with Clive's magic. <laughs> another bit over here as well. We've got more chickens that want to be cooked in the oven with Clive's wonderful magic. And not only that, if you're walking around and about, not only is Clive just super cool and just like just looks like your best mate, and you can say, hey, you see this really cool guy over here? He's my best mate called Clive. Then like you know. He's going to defend you and protect you and everything. If anyone ever dares pick a fight with you, Clive, he's just going to stand in front of them. He doesn't even need to pull out his sword. His presence alone is just really that powerful, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So if you want a bodyguard with the ultimate the ultimate power and just strength and everything, then I would guarantee that Clive <laughs> will be <laughs> <for> you. <laughs> uh, well done, Rosie. Very good, Rosie. <laughs> wow. <sighs> That was oh, relentless. Yeah, that, well, that was that's the nonsense I said on that little board game when we had auctioneers. Things like you know you want your light bulb fixed, Clive can electrocute it and yeah, fix it that for was you. Good. Yeah. That, that's that just was... stuff that came out. <laughs> well, Rosie, I'm gonna give you a second to recover from that, and we're gonna move on to our next section with a little musical break. So we're gonna go to before we go. <laughs> Right, we are here in our final section before we go where we talk about things outside of gaming that make us real life flesh people. Boo-hoo, it has been such a good podcast. I really enjoyed it. But now you need to tell me about things that aren't, you know, linked to to gaming as as I punch this tablet Um, I don't think I have anything to update anyone on no well my life has been so Final Fantasy 16 centric for the last couple of weeks I have done literally nothing else yeah I bet you've done some stuff I have I have done some stuff but again it's all been very Final Fantasy 16 (laughs) related Um, I'm just trying to think Um, I had way too many burgers so I spent some I spent some time in in Los Angeles and uh, doing some promotion for this video game and uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know what it was but I decided that instead of having food every meal was going to be a burger mm. and it got to a point how many burgers is too many burgers well I found out <laughs> <laughs> um, and I and I, I've come back to the UK and I said to my fiance I was like I do not want to see another burger <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of my life uh, so yeah I'm I'm fully burgered out even though they're like my favorite food I think mm. I've just um yeah so no more burgers for me please if you what see was your me. favorite burger you had over there um i i'm i just it was it, this is this is where i made the mistake because it was the most delicious one it was a, it was just a it was just a normal cheese bacon cheeseburger but i just said can i get an extra patty in that oh. and the woman looked at me the woman looked at me and said um are you sure <laughs> and i said yeah Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, and, I, and now I know why she why she said it. I've never I haven't had to do this in my entire life. I, I looked at it and I went I can only eat this with a knife and fork. Oh man. this cannot be f- this this I can't fit yeah. this in my mouth. Um, and yeah, and it was it was delicious, but it was the one you know it was the wafer thin mint that made me explode at that point. <laughs> I went no thank you, I don't want any more burgers. What was your least favorite burger? Um, it was. A cold in and out burger mm. I had, even though actually it was still quite nice. Um, I, I, we were doing, um, I was doing a load of interviews and one of the teams said, would you like a burger? I went, yes, please. Because uh, in and out is a lovely brand of burger, if I'm allowed to say that. Um, not sponsored. Um, <laughs> other burgers yeah, are other available. burgers are available. Um, I can list them for you. Um, what a thrilling podcast that would be. Just be <laughs> listing brands of burger. How long you got? Rosie, you want to do it quickly? Yeah, I was going to say, she's um, an auctioneer of all yeah, these burger brands. It would be great. Uh, yeah, and it was, it, was, it was a cold burger by the time it got there and it, that was going to be my first in and out burger of the trip and it was cold, so it was a little bit disappointing but delicious nonetheless but it was just a shame that it wasn't as warm as I would have liked well you could have thrown in Rosie's double compartment bin if, if you'd have been here 
Have you so heard about sorry. my double compartment? No, yeah, we, we don't need to hear about <laughs> it anymore, Rosie. It's, hey, it's still standing tall, my good old double compartment bin. Is, I, I still don't even yeah, understand. You've seen it. it. Yeah, yeah it's, I, actually, I, I saw it. Did you it. go specifically to see the bin? Yeah. To be fair, as soon as she came in, she was like, I've got to see the double compartment bin. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, I You've got to tell Ben what it is now. Well, yeah. It's, it's, always, it's a bin, but it's, it's, it's got <laughs> okay. two compartments. Sorry, stop there. What? But it's got two compartments. It's a double compartment bin. No, I got that from the name, but like, is it underneath a different compartment or is it like two? no so it's um so you know if you've just got like a circular bin that like mm. a 30 litre circular bin that, that's just there Very whereas vivid. this is more of a rectangle and it's got two 30 litres in it next to each other oh, yeah, but I've it's got, one unit yeah I've got one of those yeah it's a double compartment bin yeah that's just a normal bin it, it sounds yeah, like was, two bins to me it is yeah. two bins it, it is, is two, two bins, bins. like right. the left one I use for recycling you, for, like I use the right for recycling because it's oh, R and R so okay. it's like right for recycling that's how I remember I stand <laughs> correct wow <laughs> <laughs> I've been living a lie <laughs> so soon when you're like left for recycling like, no 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 yeah, and no. then my left is for personal for general general for waste personal stuff. use sometimes I just sleep in there I take a nap it's fine I just take yeah, it out and yeah. I'm like I'm rocking this. Sometimes I get dressed in there, it's fine. <laughs> So yeah, well, I mean, you've, do you like your double compartment? I, I genuinely love it. It's a, it's yeah, a, it's it's a, it's a, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Yeah, yeah that, that's com- what Rosie said. It was a game changer as well. To be fair. But I just don't understand why you wouldn't just buy two bins because and put them next up to more each other. Because it takes more space. Aesthetically, it's very pleasing. Okay. Honestly, you see it, you'll go. That's smart. Yeah. It does look wrong. nice, yeah. Right. Mm. Maybe, uh, I'm going to have to get one now. Yes. I think, I've got three people looking at me like, get yourself a double compartment bin. I don't even have a bin. So, what? Oh, yeah, yeah you've got, I just you got a bag. Carry right. a bag on the door. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 what do you mean your personal items? Oh, I've just got a, a, a carrier bag that I hang on a door handle and throw things in, which is good because it makes me take the, the rubbish out more. I have a little bin in some rooms, but I don't have a big kitchen bin. I just have a bag. How big are these bins? Because you've described them like this big. Yeah. <laughs> well, like you can, I can get my hand in to like pull the bin bag out. So oh, nice. that's like the movement. Well, it's, with your fingers that delicately yeah. like yeah. pinched yeah. together. I don't want to touch the muck, so I just... <laughs> but, like there's enough room to do that <laughs> there is a whole podcast on bin etiquette yeah, there really I mean, is there actually is though yeah. we'll include sword or mom in it as well yeah, so great. we got have a little round up <laughs> we'll have the burger breakdown sword or mom and bin etiquette and that'll be yeah the... to be fair that should be a title on the double compartment bin like one lid is mum and one lid is sword, sword. yeah what, what who's throwing their mom out no one oh if anything you're you're you're, you're you know <laughs> taking care of your mum in the bin yeah I actually think there's a game in that which is we use your double compartment bin and if you think the answer is sword you throw it in one and if you think the answer is mum you throw it in the other yeah. so it's like a game I'm here in a Christmas maze <laughs> just pick up some rubbish like oh it's an old hilt sword yeah. <laughs> oh it's some net tights mum yeah. net tights specifically uh, yeah, yeah I don't I, look I'm moving on it's the end of the podcast <laughs> I'm running on fumes so everybody that is the end of the podcast Ben Starr thank you so much for joining us it has been fantastic chatting with you learning more about Final Fantasy 16 and just about you you've been lovely thank, oh, thank you. you and thank you you guys for being here as normal yeah so can I, can I say as well Ben is, you might have seen if you're watching this on a video yeah. Ben gifted us these lovely badges as well that we've been Sorry, I'm just talking away from the mic, but Ben's gifted us these lovely badges which we've been wearing. And Ben, thank you so much for, for gifting these thank to you, us. Ben. Yeah. I am Titan. Yeah. Titan. I am Ramu. Ramu. Robu. 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 Yes. And I am. I am Shiva. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry keep it again. Yeah. And I've got the I've got the Ifrit one. Um, yeah, I, d- I, d- I thought I'd give them to you because I think they're quite special. You guys have been part of my Final Fantasy 16 journey. It so is very special, and I will yeah. I will treasure this always. Oh yeah, so will I. It's going on my gaming shelf. Oh yeah, I love this little freak. All proudly on display. Yeah, he's going to go on. It's my going permanent, permanently on my lapel yeah. of, of whatever I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm going to pin it to your forehead, oh, just in the middle. No. Oh okay. Don't do that. Oh, no. <laughs> so you'd like that? It doesn't have to be with the sharp bitch glue. Oh yeah. Yeah. Still no. <laughs> <laughs> well, whilst we debate that further, I'm going to end the podcast there. So thank you all for listening, for joining. Keep an eye on the channel for more Final Fantasy 16 coverage. Go and head there for Rob's impressions as well, where he's done a lovely video on. Just go and look at the YouTube channel. There's loads of fun stuff on there. In the meantime, we'll be back in two weeks. So keep an eye on the podcast feed until then. Otherwise, that's us done. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Station.